Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and Red Hood Outlaw, issue number 29. I'm not going to say this was a solid issue, but oh man, I had a lot of fun reading this. I might actually read this again. After I'm finished with my 40 plus comics this week, I might just decide to read this one again. Damn! Okay, so this issue is called Tooth and Claw. Scott Libdell is the writer. The artist and cover artist is Pete Woods. Some guy named Rex Lorcus, uh, Locus decided to come in and do the colors instead of letting Pete Woods do everything. God bless them both. And uh, ALW's Troy Pateri did the uh, the letters. It was a variant cover by Yasmin Putri. And boom. So basically we get Red Hood and Batwoman going at it with the Mondays. Okay, they've got a bad case of the Mondays. How was that not a freaking title of this, a working title for this arc, for this issue, for something like that, right? A bad case of the Mondays. God damn, what a missed opportunity. Well, I guess we could try and do this again one of these days. In the meantime, um... Batwoman has been calling the, them the Mondays because they're not really Solomon Grundy's. They're actually a strain of the of Solomon Grundy, along with a um, a bunch of technology to I don't know put together these things. They're ridiculously strong. They're huge. They're powerful. But regular humans like Kate Kane and Jason Todd can take a punch from these things and still get back up. Albeit hurt really bad. Uh, they're much stronger than what an average human, excuse me, can and should be. So, yeah, stronger than Deathstroke, stronger than Captain America, stronger than Batman. Anyway, um, they're just going around killing these things. I love the, the quick conversation where Kate's like, oh, they're not really real, so we, can, we don't have to hold back. And Jason Todd's like, who was holding back? <laughs> That's awesome. I dig that, man. So anyway, um, yeah, these guys, they're just, like, a lot of this is just them going back and forth. This was high octane, a lot of action in this comic book, man. It felt... I gotta be honest with you guys, like, this is me talking, and I'm the guy who likes story over anything else, so with this being so action-heavy, I hope that this appealed to a lot of people. Me, personally, it was fun, but somewhat forgettable, because action only goes but so far with me. So you make this whole comic book about action, okay, it is what it is. Granted, I'm positive I'm in the minority in that, because I can also, like, I'm looking back and seeing this whole American pie kind of, you know, country, uh, country loving, you know, apple pie, whatever, um, storyline that they've been doing, the story arc, and I can see a lot of people saying that, or thinking that they were bored. I don't recall if anybody actually said that to me, that they were bored, but... I can imagine it. So I'm trying to put myself in other shoes. You know what I'm saying? It's part of my native ancestry. Don't judge a man till you walk a mile in his moccasins. So I'm trying to, you know, trying a bunch of moccasins here. Anyhow, so um, we do get Jason Todd finally separating from Kate Kane. And I love the way that these two work together. <laughs> like they, they work together really well, really well. And at the end of the day, um, <laughs> their relationship, I, uh, I almost wish that they were dating. Obviously it's not possible since Kate is a lesbian and I didn't know that she was, uh, she was getting busy with Renee Montoya. What's up with that? When did that happen? <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I, I do love their relationship. Like I kind of want to see these two working together a lot. Now, when I say that, that actually has a lot more gravity than it may sound on the outskirts. In my opinion, I wasn't a huge fan of Kate Kane, all right? The first time I'd heard of her, I was like, oh, cool, 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 that's going to be cool. The problem is, I was in the Middle East at the time, so I had zero access to comic books. That was not happening, you know what I'm saying? So I wasn't able to read, so I, I read about her, like about her on the internet. I did not actually get to read the comic books. It wasn't until I came back home and sometime later through asking, you know, people who I knew, talking to people at the comic book store, oh, she's actually related to Batman. I still don't even know how she's related to Batman. Like, second cousin, um, pre-marriage, I don't know. It's not the most important thing in the world to me until now. Now I'll figure it out. Now I'll actually start looking some of this stuff up. Why? Because I really liked her portrayal in this. The only, the first time I really had any access to her was in her series, uh, issue one, excuse me, issue zero of uh, Batwoman Rebirth came out, and then just issue zero of Batwoman came out, and it was like, you go from, and there's just the Rebirth, why did you, I don't understand, it was just, it was cheap. It was really cheap. They could have just made that one series. Doesn't matter. I read them all. I read up until about issue number three or four, whatever. Um, I did reviews for them. 
And um, I remember I would read one or two extra issues after I stopped making the reviews because I wasn't fond of it. I don't like making bad reviews or, you know, insulting comic books. And I felt like I couldn't continue making reviews about the comic books and, you know, being positive about them. So I just let it go. Anyhow, I thought that um, the portrayal of her there wasn't great. I I just didn't like the comic book. I didn't like how she was portrayed. She just, she was boring to me. And she was actually almost hateful. I really just couldn't stand reading her, her personality or anything. Uh, apparently, I wasn't too far off from the majority in that particular regard because the comic book did cancel. It did go off with a whimper. Nobody seemed upset by that at all. I could be wrong, but I really didn't see the outrage. Just Compare that comic book canceling to if this comic book were to just quietly cancel. If suddenly you realize that this wasn't on next month's solicits, there would be outrage. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people were loving this comic book. So I kind of equate it to that. Um, and then her portrayal in Detective Comics, including uh, whatever, 974, I think they, they do mention it in this comic book, when she killed Clayface. Um, I didn't like her there either because I disagreed with her in killing Clayface. I, you know, I, as I've mentioned before, I'm a guy who believes in redemption. I believe that people can change. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a very religious aspect, but pardon me. <laughs> so, um, I do believe that people can change and I do believe that, uh, we'll never know now because she murdered him, but I do believe that people can overcome their adversities, you know, and, and get through really troubled times. And that definitely uh, includes Clayface. And the fact that he's kind of off doing his thing now. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, Clayface uh, has been shown to be alive, just in hiding. Anyhow, um, whoever's going to write him to make him say, you know, maybe they'll make him say, I'm glad that she assassinated me or how dare she assassinate me. Don't know, don't care. That's all on the writer. And that's that. But... Uh, this portrayal of her, I really liked her. She was badass. She was tough as nails. She didn't take any crap. She was not going to play sidekick to anybody, and especially not this former sidekick. You know what I'm saying? I loved her portrayal in this, and I think she worked well with Jason Todd. I welcome seeing more Batwoman in the Jason Todd, the uh, Red Hood Outlaws, or Red Hood Outlaw comic book. Really fun. Definitely fun. Uh, reading this. Um, all the way up until the end, everything was really cool. I like this. I like that there was a lot of back and forth. Um, also, yeah, Kate Kane really came across as a human. She could literally go from, you know, nagging like the big sister or little sister, however, I don't know the age difference or, or what their actual relationship is, but, you know, nudging and, you know, <laughs> I'm not touching you to all of a sudden, hey, real talk. I'm sorry for your loss, you know, of your friend Arsenal. You know, I didn't get him, but, you know, I know that you two were, were tight. And then she can go right back to, you know, talking about, you know, if, if, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to pull your lungs out through your nose. And meanwhile, he's like, you know, you just got punched in the face by a Monday and I feel really bad leaving you, but got to go. Like their relationship was great. <laughs> I can't talk enough about how much I love these two working together. This is a good dynamic duo, damn it, because nobody's subservient to the other and they're not actually trying to outdo each other. So it's not even like a Legolas and Gimli kind of thing, like from Lord of the Rings. That only counts as one. No, this is very different from that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, these, what do you call it? The, um, these two talking at the end, that was my, my, probably one of my favorite parts because I was starting to get, uh, not angry, but you know, comic book angry, nerdy angry, not nerd rage angry, where they were talking about, you know, if, I apologized to Batman about murdering Clayface, and he forgave me. I think that, you know, if you talk to him, he'll forgive you, too. And um, at first, Jason Todd is talking about, oh, well, you know, no, I, I crossed a line. I did what I did out of anger, not out of rationality like you did. So I don't think that there's any coming back from that. And I'm just like, you puss. You absolute sissy, wussy, yellow belly. How dare you? How dare you? And I turn the page, and then he says exactly, or he's trying to say exactly what I would have said. F Batman. You know what I'm saying? Seriously. Like, look, I love Bat I love Batman, but in this at least, so judgmental. Dude, how dare you shoot Penguin in the eye? I'm sorry. Did you ever beat the living crap out of Penguin for all the crap that he's done the way that you beat the crap out of your former protege who you allowed to be murdered because of your 
Well, because of his being young and you not being smart enough to realize that what you're doing is reckless endangerment, endangering a minor and not realizing, well, this is my partner. I do know that he is reckless. He's probably going to want to go after his mom. Just because I said sit doesn't mean he's going to sit. And just, you know... You know, I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of taking personal responsibility for yourself, and I gotta say that Batman, in general, with his relationship with Red Hood, Batman's a jackass. Look, I can love Batman for all the other things, but anytime somebody brings up, but what about the whole Jason Todd situation? That is Batman's ultimate failure. That is the ultimate thing. Like, besides all the psychosis and the fact that he can't move on, Pearl's in the freaking alley and stuff like that. Oh, my God, grow up. You know what I'm saying? Calm thyself. Stop beating the crap out of people. Why don't you use your resources to actually help people as opposed to beating up on, you know, the, the misfortunate? Um, all of that comes into, comes into my mind when I think about his relationship with Jason Todd. He's never been fair with Jason Todd. That is, regardless of, it, like... One of the things that I love about the Batman family is the relationship that Batman has with all the different... He doesn't treat Damien the same way he treats Nightwing, the same way he treats Red Hood, the same way he treats um, um, uh, Tim Drake, the same way he treats anybody. He doesn't treat any of them the same way. They all have very distinctive personalities, and that's one of the things that I love about the Batman comic books. But, again, when you mention Jason Todd in the same uh, subject matter as Batman, nope, Batman failed miserably and he continues to fail and that's one of the things that make this a great story i love that about this so when jason todd at the very end what exactly does he say again um something like batman could shove it up as he can take his forgiveness and yeah <laughs> you can forget you know imagine where that conversation would have continued where that sentence would have ended if he wasn't interrupted <laughs> you know what I'm saying? so i like that i like that Jason Todd needs to be his own man because he's not a member of the Bat family. He's a former member of the Bat family. He doesn't need to go back. He doesn't need forgiveness. He doesn't need absolution. You know what I'm saying? If anything, Batman should be the one to apologize and continue apologizing because, damn it, you failed this one. You failed this one. So I like that Red Hood is able to take that and just kind of move forward. And he's kind of like, I don't need to be in Batman's good graces. Maybe Batman should be trying to get in mine. I like that. I definitely like that. I like that idea that he's being his own person. I don't know if that's been in um, the Red Hood and the Outlaws comic books or not, because I only started with issue 25, you know, and, and the annual, uh, annual two. But if, if that is the case, I love this. I love this portrayal of him. He's very quickly becoming one of my favorite characters in the DC Universe. Very cool. Anyway, guys, long enough, right? Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.